Hello, and welcome to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast with your host, me, Hal Coleman, uncensored and unplugged. Pay attention, take lots of notes, because you're going to find out exactly how to get more new customers, more referrals, and grow your business. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuide.com. And this is Hal Coleman. Welcome to another episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Uh, I am better known as Mr. Offline, and I'm here with Mr. Online, my good friend and business partner, Mike Stewart. Mike, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, Hal. Uh, You're always there. Well, you know, the one of the things about the online world is you don't have to get in a car, start up the engine, and waste any gas to meet with your buddies. Yeah, I talk to you more now than I did when we lived near each other. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And we actually yeah. see each more each other more in person because we got reasons to get together like never before. Yeah. So it's yeah. all good. And it's, uh, you know, have have uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I can talk to my client in Australia just like you and I talk on Skype and uh, sit here and look at each other face, face to face. It's amazing. And I said, how would you find out about me? He said, well, I was listening to your podcast when I was in Japan. And then when I got back to Australia, I called you. So that's it. You know, it's just like working in your own neighborhood. Yeah, it, it opens up a world of opportunity. But, you know, the Internet is just as powerful in your own backyard as it is all over the world. Sure uh, is. And that's that's one of the things that we like to help people in the online world is <clears throat> is to get the uh, offline message online locally. And uh, uh, th- that's what we strive to help our clients is, you know, you don't need to dominate the world. You need to dominate your backyard when you have a, a brick and mortar business uh, in a, a geographical location. That's right. That's right. And and speaking of the the Internet and the web and that kind of communication, you know what? I, I want to talk about uh, SEO, Mike, because mm-hmm. I've got some questions. You know, we did our workshop, uh, the uh, Next Level PCO uh, Marketing Workshop down at the Embassy Suites in Atlanta last weekend. Uh what a what a blast! What some great folks in that workshop. I mean, they just, you know, hungry for a better way and and ready to roll up their sleeves and go to work. They were so enthusiastic, and uh, I, I don't know about you, but I had a great time, and I think you did too. Mm-hmm, absolutely. But one of the things that came up uh, that was uh, kind of a theme over over everything else there when it comes to problems people will have growing their business is they're spending a lot of money on SEO and they can't trace it back to any customers. Now, not everybody was having that problem, but you know, SEO, uh, of course stands for search engine optimization. And this day in time to me, sometimes SEO is, uh, something everybody offers, you know, so it's, uh, there's a lot of SEO folks out there. I'm sure there's some absolutely phenomenal ones. And then there are some that don't seem to deliver, and there seems to be a, you know, a little two-sided discussion going on at times about what SEO and is and what it's not. So could, could you pick up on that subject and just tell, tell us more about what, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking – like any like anything else, if you're going to hire an SEO company, if you're going to hire a coach, if you're going to hire a pest control company, if you're going to hire a dog groomer, if you're going to hire a mechanic, if you're going to hire a roofer, if you're going to hire a builder, a lawyer, you know, uh, get some references. Talk to some people and don't just sign up with the first person that comes along. Say, well, could you, you know, give me uh, at least a couple of references of people that you've done this for, whatever it is, 
building a house, anything. Uh, I'd like to couple, talk with a couple of people you've worked with and see what they have to say about working with you and what kind of results they got. So uh, is that realistic in SEO also? Well, it should be. Um, the, the, the truth is, is, is that let's go back to the beginnings. Uh, search engine optimization is what SEO stands for. And that means making a website that ranks above your competition for the for the phrases that people type in search engines that make you money. Uh, you know, uh, the obvious one is pest control, exterminator. Um, you know, there's millions of words and phrases that people type into their uh, Google and, and all the search engines being Yahoo are the three big ones. And, of course, there's there's all kinds of compiler websites. There's all kinds of places that people search. And so SEO means are you found for the words that would bring you a customer? And if you're not, then there are people out there that say that they can make it happen for you. And unfortunately, and I'm not going to name names because it's, irrelevant there are people out there that promise a moon and don't deliver it and all they want is they just want to build and keep you in the dark about things and those people anger me i'll be honest with you how they they're just they're telling you things that they can do and sometimes it's it's really tough to do it because the if you got you just think about it logically here let's say you're in a market like uh atlanta or birmingham or nashville or los angeles or new york and you want to rise to the top of the search engines for New York pest control or pest control near me. Pest con- uh, a service and the words near me is probably one of the top words to rank for. And if, you know, in the city of Atlanta, how many pest control agencies do you think there are in Atlanta? Oh, gosh, the service Atlanta, I'm sure uh, several hundred. Okay, let's, let's say just, just off the top of our head, there's 200. Well, there's only 10 to 12 results per page on the first page of Google or the first page of Bing or the first page of Yahoo. So it's physically, mathematically impossible for everybody to be number one. So with all the optimization tricks that used to work, next week they stop working. It's a cat and mouse game. Um, SEO companies do what's called white hat search engine optimization, and some of them do what's called black hat search engine optimization. Well, the search engine companies, uh, and, and sometimes customers don't know what they're doing. You know, I mean, we've talked to customers. Well, what are they doing for you? I don't know. Well, that's a bad answer. You need to say, what are you doing? How are you getting me to rise to the top of the search engine? Are you going to link farms? Are you going to, are you buying clicks from China uh, on uh, Fiverr? Those are all black hat bad things to do that will will you may be uh, rise to the top of the search engines for a minute and then when google figures out you're cheating uh through their algorithms you know you're back on page 20 so seo is a cat and mouse game and the only thing that i know that really really matters to google and this was told to me at a wordpress convention in san francisco a few years ago when a google um search engine expert from Google themselves said this. And they said, your domain name, your your web address, something called the title tag, which is very easy to adjust ethically and legally. In other words, if you are, we'll, we'll take um, Savannah Pest Control, our client, Mike Warren. He named his company Savannah Pest Control. His web address is savannapestcontrol.com. His title tag is Pest Control Savannah, Georgia. That's his title tag. And then number two, so in other words, the domain name, the title tag, and the words on the page of your website, especially the page you want to rank high, needs to be relevant to what you do. So if you're selling pest control services, the word pest control should be on the page. It should be... um, very descriptive about the service and all related. So in other words, there's because what a lot of people try to do is they try to trick um, Google into sending traffic to websites that aren't about what uh, they made people think it's about. That That's a black hat SEO strategy that 
if people try to sell you on it, I can tell you right now, if the minute somebody figures out something, Google changes it. I, I heard the other day, Google changes their algorithm to judge who ranks higher than other several hundred times a year. So mm. just be honest. So the honest thing for pest control is a great URL. A, a, we, we was working with a client yesterday. His title tag had did not have his location in the title tag. We, you know, he had the name of his business, but you can in the title tags say the name of your business and, and the location you are. And then something called the meta description is real important. Um, and it's in WordPress. It's very easy to make sure these things are configured correctly. Um, you know, one of the things we recommend is a very short meta description uh, that shows up in the first page, you know, on, on your listing uh, index in the, the search engines. And you can put, you know, uh, you call in your phone number so that actually there the phone number shows up in the meta descriptions. A lot of times the meta descriptions are going off on tangents that have nothing to do with your business. And that's just because they left those things out. And then the other thing is legitimate links that come back to you. And uh, the only way you can get legitimate links is like having a non-competitive website. Say a realtor says, our, you know, you say you have a very popular realtor in your town. Well, uh, it would, it, would it, excuse me for interrupting, but it would it be kind of like we do. I have a uh, uh, pest control marketer, but we also have pest control jingles, pest control marketing workshop, uh, pest control marketing uh you know, probably six or eight websites there that involved with our pest control, linking those back to each other. Yeah, linking those back to each other is is good, but it's better when it's people who are not on the same. You, they're not the same business. In other words, me linking to you, Hal, and you, Hal, linking to me is what Google wants to look. Those are called backlinks. Okay. So, so one of the things that you want to do is you you know you need to build legitimate backlinks. If every real estate agent in your market said you were the preferred uh, pest control and they had a link to your website from their website, Google would detect that and those would be legitimate bank link, backlinks. There's things called if you go to Google and search link farms. Um, sometimes SEO people don't tell you they're using link farms, and link farms are frowned upon. Uh, in Google, they don't like it. It's 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 a it's another way uh, of cheating. And it's uh, in fact, here's an article I'm looking at right now why link farming is bad for SEO. So you just have to be aware. You know, is is you know the best way to check out a, an SEO company is say I'd like to have comp- uh, people using you, and I want to know their results. And then of course the other thing that's really really important for SEO is that if you don't set up your own Google, an- don't let the SEO company set up your Google Analytics. Learn to log into your own Google Analytics and understand how many clicks you're getting, and then measure how many sales you're getting from the clicks. And that's called your conversion rate. And, and what would be what would be a good conversion rate? I well, think I know, but but you yeah. just say in, in a home service business like like pest control. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure it's all over the place. But in internet marketing, we used to say if you got two out of a hundred, if a hundred clicks came to your website and two turned into paying customers, you should do a happy dance. Yeah, yeah. And in, anything above so. two out, anything out of two out of a hundred, you should do a bigger happy dance. Mm-hmm. And and so the, the the theory is the more clicks to your website and the uh, and you know you should know how many people come to your website and how they got there every day of the week. You should say, oh, okay, I can see a graph here. I used to get ten clicks a day. Now I'm getting twenty clicks a day. Now I'm getting thirty clicks a day. Now I'm getting forty clicks a day. To that yeah. land on your website, and and Google Analytics will tell you how long they stay on the page. That's called bounce rate. If they're getting there and they're bouncing off your website, they're going app ah, not for me. And and you can you can if people are bouncing off your website, then you need to look at your content. You need you know. Uh, just yesterday, I worked with a client, and they had a picture of marching cockroaches, mm-hmm. and no. Uh, promise, no guarantee, no response triggers, no, no, nothing. You didn't no even know call who to action. No call to action, nothing. And all we did was was put a picture of him in front of his truck, and he, you know, we used the Hal Coleman guarantee, and that, and we just started it. But we know 
when people are looking at this website on a cell phone and they can realize that this man is going to solve my problem and he's asking me to call him for a free quote or to get, at least get to know him better, uh, you, the response rate goes up. So yeah. you, you either, you either got to increase your response rate or you got to re- increase the number of people clicking. And so search engine optimization is one of the things that I would recommend you do. Go into your local Google, you know, get on your computer or your phone and search for yourself and see where you rank. And if you're not coming up and you're paying these people a lot of money, something's wrong. Do you need to log out of Google before you search for yourself? Well, there is a there is a place in most browsers called incognito mode. Uh-huh. Uh, Chrome really has a, a, a good one. Firefox has a good one. But what you want to do is you want to go uh, into <clears throat> to your um, uh, search engine and learn how to search what's called incognito mode. And then that lets you see what other people see. Because what happens is if you if you don't do that and you go to your own website, you'll come up high because Google remembered you like that website, or the, at least the, the browser, the, the 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 software remembered. Hey, well he's been here before. So rather than trying to clean what's called your browser history, learn how to get in into incog- incognito mode which, um, uh, you know, all browsers will do that. Chrome is really, really good because that's the um, Google browser. Firefox does it pretty well. And and then you can know because, if once again, if you don't back check, we, we've discovered people just sending money and ho- doing it with a hope and a prayer. And, um, you know, the, the SEO part, the search engine optimization means you're optimizing your website and you're not doing what's called black hat tricks. And you can yeah. actually search Google for Black Hat SEO, and you can read about it. And if your people are doing that and charging you money for it, I mean, one of the things to do is you hire the SEO company, and if your people don't start landing on your page, your, your number of people coming a day, fire them because they're not doing their job. And now here's a word from our sponsor. Google Pest Control Marketing. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. Did you hear that? That is a jingle. But more than that, it is an audio logo and what I call a marketing earworm. But you know, that's a bug. That's a worm you want in your local market on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and podcasts like you're listening to right now. Yes, you should do a podcast as a PCO, but we'll talk about that another time. You want your market singing Google your name, what you do, and your phone number. Simple, but it works. If you want to cash in on this marketing bonanza, go to PestControlMarketingJingles.com to learn more. Or just call me, Mike Stewart, at 770-826-3662. Or call Hal Coleman at 770-993-0004. And we would love to show you how to do what we call search and call advertising with earworms. And oh yeah, it works on that old timey technology of radio and television. Why don't you call us today and learn more? Google Pest Control Marketing. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. And, you know, sometimes we found that they're getting the impressions and visitors, but they're not getting any calls. And we look at the website, and there's no response triggers on the website. There's no call to action. There's no bold promise. There's no guarantee. There's nothing. So the people land on it. It's like a salesman showing up at your door. And when you go to the door, he's standing there with a nice $400 suit on and a tie and the gold watch and smiling. But he doesn't say anything. He just stands there. Yeah, yeah. So you just close the door, you know. I mean, you know, that 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 gets into that really isn't the SEO question. The SEO Yeah, I, is, I know that, but but sometimes well, they might be doing the SEO uh doing a good job on SEO driving them to a totally uh uh non-response generating website. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a yin and a yang. It's a, it's a balance of the scales. Uh, but SEO is supposed to be free clicks from the search engines. But people charge money telling you that they can get you to the top of the search engines. And there are some things that need to be done. It was interesting. I was working with this website yesterday and they paid an SEO company and there were uh, uh, T's not crossed and I's not dotted. 
Yeah. So I, you know, so I question is then what were they doing? So, so at the, at the end, end of the day, you need to go to Google and you need to act like a customer. You know, if, if, uh, rat removal makes you money, I would put in rat removal near me. And there's two other things about SEO. Um, and like here, I found a, um, a wildlife company here in Nashville that ranks organically. And it's because, in fact, I'll read it. Their title tag says mouse and rat removal in Nashville, Franklin, and Brentwood. That's a great geo-targeted title tag. Uh, the name of the company and their phone number, whoever did this is doing it correctly. And it's just little things like that. So now here I'm looking at another one and his, um, uh, his, uh, what's called his, not to, his meta description says, because rats are so dangerous to health and safety of your family members, these pests are not the ones to mess around with. You need competent advice and. Versus, and I'll give the name here, All Paul's Wildlife Removal specializes in mouse and rat trapping and removal in greater Nashville. If you have a mouse or rat, a mouse or rat issue, call us at 615-so-so-so. So just little tweaks like this can mean the difference between somebody going to your website or even calling you. So when it comes to SEO, make sure everything is configured properly, that if you're working with an SEO company, you know what you're paying for. Measure it yourself. Don't let them measure it and just send you reports. I would never and, do that. Yeah. <clears throat> and also, never... oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, and then there's two other things to SEO. Optimizing your Google place, business places. Your Google business is where you make sure that you're um, uh, because generally the first thing that comes up are ad, uh, are paid ads. The second thing that comes up are Google Places or Google Maps, and getting reviews. In fact, I'm looking at a. Uh, this is interesting. There's three rat control companies. One has 446 reviews, and the next company has 37 with a 3.2 rating. And then there's another company here that has one review. Thank God it's a five star review. So maps or what's called the push pin uh six pack is probably about as important as what you know getting that straightened out is probably even more important than organic seo mm-hmm. so with that and then and then of course the other thing that that seo companies don't do a good job or don't do at all is what you and i are preachers of content marketing yeah. and and content marketing is uh, podcasting, YouTube videos, YouTube channel, uh, sharing uh, videos and audios on Facebook, um, posting on Facebook, having a Facebook group, having a Facebook business page, getting Facebook reviews, getting Yelp reviews. All of those things are part of the search engine optimization world, but those are things that you don't do to your website. If you want to make Google, Bing, and Yahoo rank your website higher, You've got to have it relevant. And you and the other thing is uh, what we teach our clients is content marketing, adding fresh content regularly to their website. Most people build a website. The guy I worked with yesterday built a website, and he hadn't added anything new to it in two years. Well, Google's not going to come back and check out if there's fresh content there. Uh, we try to put up content weekly, which is what helps us generate uh search engine optimized leads to our websites and we have multiple websites that's another angle in fact we were uh, we were talking to a, uh, one of our clients that came to the workshop and bed bugs makes them money and they bought a geo targeted url for their area which is there's millions of them well not maybe not millions but hundreds of thousands of geo targeted urls that are still available in the dot com world and so there's so many things that most people never do the, the biggest thing that frustrates me in the SEO world is a company promises you the moon, you pay them. I've heard figures anywhere from 500 to 5,000 a month. They promise you the moon. And then I go and look and I say, well, I don't see any evidence of them doing anything. And And the phone's not ringing. Well, that's the biggest litmus test is if you're paying advertising dollars and the advertising's not paying for itself. My good friend, John Reith said, stop, stop the bleeding and regroup. Yeah. And um, and that's that's pretty much it. SEO is just saying trying to make your website 
rank higher because you did it right. You didn't try to trick the search engines. And, you know, if you have a reputable company that does a great job, and, and I, I can't profess I know everything about SEO. If there's an SEO guy listening here, you know, go to our pest c- control marketer group and post the results and the things that you do that would help others because we're trying to open the book here. This is what helps our customers and the customers that do what we tell them how uh, have had amazing results in their local market. But it, uh, like you said, it's not one thing. It's lots of, could be thousands of little things that make the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I just wanted to, <clears throat> I thought because that was a big topic in our uh, workshop that we ought to, <clears throat> well, excuse me, we ought to tackle it on this podcast. So, and I think we did. And just the last thing I'll throw out is be sure, ask for references. Say, I'd like to talk to a couple of other pest control companies that you've worked for and see what kind of results they got. And bottom line, they want the phone to ring and they want people to to swipe the credit card and become customers. Uh, so that, that's what it's all about. So uh, we appreciate you listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Mike, I appreciate I always have a blast when we get together and talk. You know, we... We're doing yeah. it here, but we we do it on the phone every every day or two. Right. Well, you know, you know what I just realized. We've gone twenty three minutes here, and we just talked about SEO, and yeah. and that's one of the three things. Maybe we ought to do two other podcasts because uh, SEM is search engine marketing, which is paid advertising, and we, that's a whole other world. And then content marketing is what we're we're advocates of people to create. Well, maybe re- we'll just do that on the next pest control marketing podcast how about that well you know i i believe that's a that's a probably a helpful idea and i'll tell you something when you want to learn what to say you need to call 770-993-0004 and talk to hal coleman and and take his one hour evaluation to make sure that you're saying the right things and doing the right things and knowing what to do to grow your business. You know, Hal is, in my opinion, uh, and I'm going to stick to it, the premier pest control marketing coach in the world, and he's willing to spend an hour of you to prove it. So give Hal a call, and uh, I just want to at least leave everybody with a reminder that that's how we can make a difference in people's businesses is, is uh, start working with, with the people that have uh, done it time and time again, and that's Hal. Well, I guarantee you, you'll come away from the call uh, energized, uh, re-energized, refocused. You'll know exactly what you need to do to get your business on the fast growth track. We'll find low-hanging fruit for you right there uh, from a questionnaire I send you, and all of it will cost you exactly zero. At one hour, I call it the Double Your Business Strategy Session, and uh, You'll be amazed at what you'll learn. So give me a call. And, Mike, uh, you also offer a free uh, session, don't you? Absolutely, Hal. I, you know, I love to just kind of go through my 13 steps recipe for local domination that most people never do. And if you want to see what that is and, and, and talk about it, give me a call at 770-826-3662. I pick, it's my cell phone. I pick it up. I answer it. And I love talking to people who want to go to the next level. And you can check check all that out, um, you know, at our websites, um, and especially by listening to this podcast. Share this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. If you know anybody in another market that needs to know this information, you know, this information works for all businesses. But we love focusing on the PCOs and WCOs of the world. So, Hal, with that, let's uh, let's call it a day. Okay, Mike. I'll see you later on the next episode. And folks, thank you for listening to this episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and on your phones and in Stitcher on your Android. But more importantly, go to our website, pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com, subscribe to our email list to always be notified of new episodes. You're never going to want to miss what we've got coming up next, and you never know what we're going to be able to do to help you with your pest control marketing.